Hey there everyone, Hitesh here and welcome to the second video of our materialized CSS crash course. So in the previous video we saw that what we are going to be building up. In this video we will be going through with the overview of materialized CSS. I like to keep it as a short because this is not a big dedicated course where I would like to design five or six different websites with amazing CSS in that. I like to keep it short so let's go ahead and take a tour of materialized CSS and you'll be getting a whole lot of idea that how this entire thing is being designed and how you should be using it. First and foremost before we go anywhere just go ahead and click on about section and it is very important that you at least take a look about uh, with the team who is behind creating this entire materialize and helping a ton and tons of team to speed up their workflow and make sure that their website looks absolutely beautiful. So thank you so much to the entire team of Materialize and there are some Patreon sponsors. If you wish, you definitely should uh, think about donating a bit about them. That's how the entire community grows. Everybody requires your support just like I do. So hit that subscribe button too. Now, in the Materialize, uh, there are three major things that you need to worry about. First is CSS and there are only just two things in the CSS. Then we need to worry a bit about what are the components available and how there are some components which are based on JavaScript specifically. Now, although they keep the form absolutely uh, outside and pretty easily available and accessible, you don't need to worry too much about the form. If you understand the components in JavaScript, you will automatically understand the form. The reason why they are keeping it absolutely outside is because if I want to anything like checkboxes or some pickers, I can simply go here. I can just look at the input types and what are the JavaScript that's kicking in. And that's it. That's all I have to do. And I can grab all these things. So make sure you just understand that these are just here. You don't need to worry too much about them. All you need to worry about these three things. Now talking on to that, in the CSS, we have to worry about only two main things. Surely it is good that if you read the entirety of the thing, but there are two important things in the CSS, the colors and the grid. And they're pretty easy to understand. If you go into the color, uh, they give you a whole lot of colors that you can use. I, what I like about these colors is they give you just simple colors that you can use directly like teal and that's it, it gives you a teal color and then the blue text and stuff like that. So colors are pretty easy. The palette is really, really exhaustive and big. Uh, definitely it can help you to grab the exact things that you want to have, but I rather like to pick up my own CSS and define these coffee colors up here so that everything looks in the theme, in the semantic here. So that's the one thing that you should know. The second thing is the grid. Now they give you a couple of nice graphics and example that shows you that what happens when you have a container uh, as turned on or turned off. Pretty nice demo, but important thing is this guy. So in case you have, you might have worked in the bootstrap in the past or not, uh, entire web page in these kinds of libraries and framework is divided into 12 columns. And these are 12 equal width column. Notice here, we first have to design a row inside that we have to have a column and then we can have an S1 column. So this gives me uh, 12 equal columns. You can grab S2 or S3 or S5. For example, here they are dividing the entire web page into two equal halves. That means this entire 12 grid is divided into six here on the left side and six on the right side. All I have to do is come up and say, hey, I'll have a row and I'll have an S6 and S6. That means six column half, six column half. If I want the entire column width, then I'll just say S12. So that's a pretty easy. In case you have worked in the bootstrap in the past, this should be all super easy for you. We do have the offset properties as well that you can shift any left elements towards the right by giving the offset property, however you want to give uh, by F, uh, offset of S6 or S3. So it will move equal columns here. For example, if you set somebody as offset of three, these three columns, will be occupied and from the fourth column it will get started there. So pretty easy, nothing of a big deal. Now surely there's a whole lot of things that here we they talk about the shadows and stuff but I think this is enough for us to get started with the project. Now moving on to the component part, they are super easy. They are not much heavily dependent on to any JavaScript or something. Like for example button, I can give a simple class of wave effect, then waves light and of course BTN to look at like a button. And that's it, it's gonna appear, it's gonna look like this button here, just like here. And it's pretty good that we have these properties. 
Now, all the components which are mentioned here, they don't require much of the additional JavaScript that you have to implement. They are pretty simple. For example, cards, uh, you can have cards like this. You can just copy paste this entire thing, you can put it onto your website and this card will look almost exactly same. Remember, I said almost because sometimes additional CSS or grid needs to be implemented there. The things actually change a little bit when we have these JavaScript elements. They look absolutely fantastic, but they always require a bit of JavaScript. For example, if you want to implement carousal, uh, this one here, which we have used here. So if you want to implement this, it's not just about you can copy paste of this particular code and can have it. It's not going to work like that. You also need to initialize it. For the initialization, they give you two options. If you're using the core JavaScript, then this is the first option that you have to do. If you're using the jQuery, then you can select an element and can go and just have this line. So again, they are almost exactly the same. Here we are selecting the element by query selector and then initializing it. On the jQuery, we are already using a ready function, which is almost like an initialization. And the important thing is that this is the thing that keeps the carousal up and running. Okay, similarly to this, you are going to notice that this document.ready function is used quite a lot. For example, if I go uh, to something like modals, you are going to notice that this is again being used. So you don't need to redeclare this entire function. The outer function just remains as one guy. And inside that, we just write this here. If you want to initialize modal, we just copy paste this modal line. If I want to have the carousal, I'll use the same ready function. I will insert this guy here. If I want to have something like parallax, I can go ahead and insert, insert the parallax and can start working like that. So there we go. These are all things. If you want to read a little bit more, I highly recommend to read that. For example, this push pin, you can open up the demo and can see this is how the push pin actually works. Not really very tough to implement, but these sections in the JavaScript uh, are very JavaScript centric and you should uh, really take care of that. So there we go. This is a brief overview of how the materialized CSS works. And I know this is not very understandable as of now. If you have grabbed like 40 to 50% from this video, that's okay. That's more than enough. When we are going to actually write some code and build something stuff, that's only when the concepts are going to get much more clear. So there we go. I highly recommend to spend at least 30 to 40 minutes in reading the documentation of materialized CSS, play around with their uh, playground which they provide you or just open up a text editor and start playing around with that. So that's all the overview for it. In the next video, we'll be starting uh, our project and we'll start from there. That's it for this one. Hit that subscribe and I'll catch you up in the next one.